Hi class, finally we get to do some optimization problems. Uh, a business person wants to maximize the profit but minimize the cost. So uh, we really get to take the derivative and apply to the real world. So, um, but however, before you start a problem, you need to um, recognize the uh, notation you recognize you understand the problem you draw the diagram so for example um, when i take a look at example one right here um, when i read the problems the first thing i would do is i would draw so you see right here a farmer has 24 uh, 100 feet of fencing and wants to fence off a rectangular field that borders a straight water he needs no fence along the river of course right so let's just let's just think about this so for example if i have like uh if i put 200 and then i put so i have 200 here i have 200 here uh, so i have 2000 here and this is the river okay so you can see right here the area would be four hundred thousand, right? But if I change a little bit and I put like seven hundred, seven hundred, so that's seven hundred, that's seven hundred, so that's fourteen, right? And we have twenty four hundred, so this one is one thousand. Okay, so in this case, what I have is the area is going to be 700 multiplied by 1000. So you see it's going to be seven, um, 700,000. So you can see that we have different areas, right? So what would be the largest area? So we're going to have to do some work for it. So this is the river. Now, so first of all, the area is x times y, okay? So I'm going to draw the actual one that we need right now. So I have y here x here and x here and this is the area okay so we know that the area is going to be x times y now uh, we need to we we cannot have two variables so we need to come up with one variable so um, we want to rewrite from this equation So you know that we have 2,400 feet. So 2x plus y, so pretty much we have the perimeter, is going to be 2,400. I want to rewrite. So I'm going to solve for y. So 2,400 minus 2x. Now I have the new area. So the area is going to be... Twenty four hundred minus two x times x. Right? So let's rewrite and we have twenty four hundred x minus two x squared. Okay, so don't forget this is gonna be a of x because we rewrite. Now, we're going to take the derivative because we try to maximize it, right? So I'm going to take the derivative. That's going to be 2400 minus 4x. Okay, I need to find the critical numbers, so I'm going to set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, so you see that x is going to be 600 here. Okay, so the maximum values must occur either at this critical number or the endpoints, right? Um, remember the close interval method. So we can, uh, we can use this and test all the values. Or you can always take the second derivative. 
you see the second derivative gives you negative 4. Okay, so the second derivative gives you negative 4, which is less than 0, which is all a, a negative for all x. So a always concave downward, right? So you see right here, downward. So we have the max. So we know that we maximize the area. Okay, so um, we're going to have to solve for y. We found x. x is 600, so it's going to be 1,200. So we have, this is our, our fence here. So we have 1,200 here. We have 600 and 600. So for the current problems that we have, we have a can. I don't have a can, so let's just pretend pretend like this is a can. Um, cylindrical. So this is what we have. Right. So I have the radius here and the height here. So that's the height, that's the radius. Now, when you read the problem, you need to recognize what, what we are looking for. We find a dimension that will minimize the cost of the metal to manufacture the can. So we want, we want a surface, right? So we want to cover, we want the metal. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the surface area. So to find the surface area, you have to take care of the whole thing, right? Now, what I you can you can visualize it. So we have a can, right? So like pretend like this is metal and we are we're trying to make the can. So we have the top, we have the bottom, right? And then if you take the cans and you fold, you you uh, make it flat like this, this would be the rectangle, right? So what do we have? We have the surface area. So we have the top, which is 2 pi r squared. It's actually pi r squared, but because we have top and bottom, and then we have the rectangle. The rectangle is uh, length times width. So the length, the length would be 2 pi r up. So you see right here, this would be the circumference of the circle. So that would be 2 pi r. And then the width right here would be the height of the can of the can. So therefore we have 2 pi r times h. So this is for bottom and top. This is the side and the side is the rectangle. Bottom and top is the circle. Okay. All right, so after you establish that, we have to figure out a way to rewrite because we want to express A in terms of just one variable. Now pick the one that's easy. So you see right here, solving for H would be easier to solve. Um, easier to solve. But what do we know? We know that the cylindrical can is to be made to hold one liter of oil. So we do have the volumes. We do have the volumes. And the volumes is pi r squared times h. In this case is a thousand. I have to change the unit. Okay, because you cannot use liter um, to, to, to look for area. Okay, so after you change it, now we're going to rewrite. So we're going to solve for h. h is going to be 1,000 divided by pi r squared. All right, now I'm going to go back and rewrite the area. So the area right now is going to be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r. Instead of h, now we have 1,000 over pi r squared. 
And of course, you can simplify it. We get 2 pi r squared plus 2,000 pi cancel out, 1 r cancel out. So we have 2,000 over r. All right. We know that r must be positive, right? The radius has to be positive, And there are no limitation on how large r can be. So um, we want to minimize this, the area function right here. So a of r. And r is positive. All right. So how do I minimize? I'm going to have to find a critical number. So first, I have to take the derivative. So if I take the derivative, I ended up with 4 pi r minus, don't forget r on the bottom. You move it to the top, so r to the this one right here. Eventually, you should know. So 2,000 r to the negative first power. You bring it to the front, you minus 1. So we ended up with minus 2. So I'm going to put it on the bottom. So minus 2,000 over r squared. Okay. Let's combine it and get the LCD. So I ended up with 4 pi r cubed because I multiply r squared minus 500 over r squared. So I just pretty much factor out 4, okay? The whole point of doing this is so I can set it equal to 0. To get the critical numbers. So when do we have the critical numbers? When the numerator equal to 0. So that's when we have pi r cubed minus 500 equal to 0, meaning pi r cubed equals to 500. So if you cube it, you take the uh, cube root, you're going to end it up with the cube root of 500 divided by pi. So that's the critical numbers. Notice that the domain of the area, the domain of the area is uh, from 0 to infinity. So you can't really use the close interval method and get the, the, the endpoints and um, try the critical points to get the max and the min. So you can't really do that because we have no endpoints. Um, but we we can we can see that a prime of r is negative when r is less than the square root uh, the cube root of five hundred over pi. And the opposite, a prime of r is positive when r is greater than the critical numbers. Okay, so you can see that um, r in this case has to be the absolute min. So r equals to the cube root of 500 over pi has to be the absolute min. And then from there, we can solve for h. So what is h earlier? Um, h is 1,000 over pi r squared. So we just plug it in. There. Mm -hmm. 
So we got R, we got H, uh, and that's how we solve this problem. I want to show you a second method for this problem. So instead of solving for h, how about we um, we we use implicit differentiation? So from the very beginning, we have the area is two pi r square plus two pi r h, and the volume. What I have is pi r square h equals 1,000. All right, so now what I want is I want to take the derivative uh, on both equations with respect to r. Okay, so with respect to r, so what I have is going to be 4 pi r. And then you notice that for this one, you're going to have to do the product rule because we're going to have to do it implicit. So don't forget h prime. So what I have is 2 pi r h prime plus uh, 2 pi h. Now I'm going to have to do the same thing for this equation right here. Product rule, so what I have is pi r squared h prime plus 2 pi r h equal to 0. All right, the next step is to find the critical number. So we're going to have to set it equal to 0. Okay, so if I set it equal to 0, um, and solve for r, don't forget that we can just cancel out all the constant. So you see that we can definitely divide and take out the 2 pi. Um, so what I have is, um, what I have is 2r plus r h prime plus h. Okay. On this side, I have R H um, R H prime plus two H equals zero. So make sure we simplify. Okay, so uh, after I simplify, you see that I can just combine these two. So I'm going to take this one and bring it over here. So I have R H prime plus 2H. Okay. Now if I subtract I ended up with 2R so we cancel that and we ended up with minus H equal to 0. So what we have is 2R equals H.